Uh, Clayton Mitchell. Lucky last, Mr. Speaker. It's a great honour to stand up here as the last speaker in uh, today's general debate. And I have to say, we've heard a lot of comments today about the uh, puffery of the surplus that the government are giving themselves a big pat on the back. But the reality is, if this was a mortgage that we were paying for our house, you've only made one mortgage payment for the whole year. One out of 12 months that you've actually managed to create enough money to pay a mortgage, and you think that's good enough for this government, this country, to be uh, congratulating themselves? You've got a face like a twisted century. Is something wrong, Mr Bishop, that you not quite get those numbers? $414 million surplus, and yet it costs us nearly $500 million a month just in interest payments. Mr Speaker, the policies of this government are going down like a cup of cold sick with New Zealanders, and they've had it to the back teeth with what's going on around this country. Just yesterday in question time, Mr Speaker, it was quite interesting to see the body language of Stephen Joyce when he was being asked questions about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It was almost like a small child sort of hovering with his head down because he was so guilty with, with his hand in the, in the biscuit tin. And he wanted to pull his trousers over his head and vanish down his trouser leg because he didn't want to get the questions asked to him by the honourable member Fletcher Tabato. His response, though, Mr Speaker, was that everything's good in the provinces and in regional New Zealand, and if you just had a chance to go out there and speak to them, I think, quote unquote, he said to one of our members, that you'll find that they are very happy with the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Well, does delusional check sort of rings a bell in my head. He's either in denial or he suffers from ser uh, serious delusion. Mr Speaker, we did go out and ask the uh, provinces of New Zealand, and the, they spoke strongly against what was going on with the Trans-Pacific Partnership and many other of the policies that this government are ramming down our throat with regards to the uh, wholesale sell-off of our nation's um, state enterprises that we've been building up over generations. And just to go through that, Mr Speaker, they came out and they voted this government out of a, an electorate that had been held for over 70 years. Now that is the provinces and the um, people speaking about how disgusted they are with the direction of this government. Mr Speaker, the big sell-off started back in 1992 when they sold off the BNZ Bank, a bank which we are proud of. We grew as a, as a country where 60% of New Zealanders were using, putting their money in, feeling safe and being looked after. Then they sold off the energy, floated them out there on the stock exchange market for anybody to have a little bit of a fill in there back in the 1998. They sold off the Auckland Airport. They've handed over the corrections, things that they should be looking after themselves. They've been selling off Circo. Now they're talking about social welfare, selling off our state houses for the people, the most vulnerable people in our society, Mr Speaker. They're living in substandard conditions because this government, that can hardly get themselves a surplus, that congratulate themselves for paying one mortgage payment in a year, looking after the best interests of this country, then the question's got to be really had, Mr Speaker. I have to say, Keith Holyoke would be rolling over in his grave if he knew what this government was actually doing now. The National Party that stood so, so strong for nationalistic pride, looking after the best interests of That's all right. New Zealanders. Mr Same. Speaker, he had a quote that he wanted to make a country cherishing the opportunity and ability of home ownership and a, uh, a, a place in New Zealand where the nation, where everybody could have the ability and affordability to own their own home. Well, we're far from that. We can't even get our people living in state houses looked after because we're selling them off for foreign national corporations to get their greedy mitts into it. I have to say, though, as far as the National Party, what they are delivering on is corporate support. I mean, they're hardly a party. They could actually be considered to be, Mr Speaker, um, a foreign-controlled corporation. The National Foreign-Controlled Corporation might be a more aptly named for this so-called party that sits opposite us. And that rings true, Mr Speaker, particularly when a few months ago we had the displeasure of seeing the Cheshire grin on the Prime Minister's face when he was high-fiving his Cabinet Ministers because, wait for it, we got dollar parity with Australia. What an absolute sublime outcome that is if, for one thing, you are a foreign currency trader, but for the <laughs> provincial New Zealanders, the ones that are selling our primary exports around the world, that is the worst thing that we would want to see have happen. And here we have our Cabinet from this government across the side here, high-fiving each other, saying that that's a good thing. And of course, we know what happened quickly afterwards. The price of our dollar got shafted back down where it should be. And of course, a lot of money was made for those people trading in currency, which I can tell you right now, the rank and file New Zealanders weren't for, uh, weren't the receivers of. 
New Zealand First is a party that looks after the best interests of this country and these people, and it's about time this government, the National Corporate con uh, Controlled Organisation, put New Zealanders first. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The time for this debate has expired. I call on Members Order of the Day number one.